Starting off this countdown, we have the Blue Leaks. In June of 2020, following the killing of George Floyd and the protests, Anonymous leaked hundreds of gigabytes of law enforcement files. It has been named the Blue Leaks. Over 269 gigabytes of data were taken from over 200 law enforcement agencies. This included emails, audio recordings, videos, and documents. In total, there were millions of files leaked. Some of the leaked documents show that the FBI was monitoring the social media accounts of protesters, and they were also alerting local law enforcement about anti-police messages. Other documents showed that the FBI was tracking Bitcoin donations to protest groups, as well as highlighted some scandals and police misconduct. In our ninth spot, we have Trump's dirty laundry, and I don't mean like literally his stinky socks and undies. In May of 2020, Anonymous came after Trump during his presidency. This happened when Trump threatened to deploy his military force against the protesters. But Anonymous was like, nah, -uh, honey, you aren't doing that, and said that they had dirt on him. They said that they would publish his dirty laundry. A couple of days later, they published 169 emails that mentioned Trump one way or another. Now, most of the emails weren't even bad but it was just a scare tactic to show Trump, like, hey, we're not bluffing, okay? We got dirt on you. More on this in my next point. Coming in at number eight, we have Trump's connection to Jeffrey Epstein. So like I said, Anonymous leaked some emails about Trump. Well, they also threatened to release information connecting Trump to Jeffrey Epstein. Now, Trump and Epstein have been photographed together on a number of occasions. Apparently, they also have hung out with each other too. Some believe that Trump was a part of Epstein's ring and also exploited young females. And Anonymous apparently has proof, including access to Epstein's address book and old court documents. Technically, I'm cheating with this point since they didn't leak this information, but they did expose that they have this information. In our seventh spot, we have the Brazilian government. In June of 2020, Anonymous released personal information on the Brazilian president and his family and cabinet. This caused a lot of chaos. The federal police and the Brazilian Congress began to investigate. In the end, it was revealed that the federal government used two million of the public's money to fund advertising on several websites. Most of the websites supported the president, which makes sense as to why they wanted to put money into them. Not only that, but Anonymous leaked a number of government officials' addresses, income, and other personal information. The personal addresses were a very serious issue because it puts them at risk for attacks. Moving on, at number six, we have CSIS documents. So what I didn't know is that apparently Anonymous has some beef with the Canadian government. One of their first attacks leaked secrets about the foreign activities of the Canadian Secret Intelligence Service, aka the CSIS. It released information about the size of their network, what information they have access to, along with other sensitive government documents. The Canadian government has only admitted to having foreign stations in Washington, London, and Paris. But according to the documents leaked, they have over 25 foreign stations. And I quote, many of which are located in developing countries and or unstable environments. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the secret federal document. In another attack against Canada, Anonymous leaked top secret documents outlining the redevelopment of Canada's key diplomatic centers in Britain, including selling, relocating, and refurbishing Canada's diplomatic buildings in London. Now, it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's the fact that they got a hold of these top secret documents that's concerning. The documents were marked as confidence of the Queen's Privy Council, which basically means that it's top secret and private documents. Therefore, the government of Canada is looking into its own people to see if someone among them is leaking these documents to Anonymous, or maybe they're a part of Anonymous. In our first spot, we have the hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. In January of 2021, Anonymous attacked the government of Malaysia. They defaced 17 government and university websites. This was part of their campaign called hashtag Ops Wake Up 21. Basically, the purpose of this campaign was to highlight the poor security of the government's websites and to warn people about it. In a post, they said, and I quote, Greetings, we are Anonymous Malaysia. 
This is message to government Malaysia. Your security system is low. All data may be leaked. This can cause unwanted hackers selling all your information. Basically, they accused the government for keeping silent and covering up a number of data breaches that occurred over the years. The government knew that personal information of their citizens was being obtained and sold, and they just kind of covered it up until Anonymous exposed them. Coming in at number three, we have Anonymous Malaysia Part 2. During the Anonymous Malaysia attack, they also revealed that Facebook was selling private information to government agencies. In a post, Anonymous said, and I quote, if you're a hacktivist willing to, or a man who just wants to protect his freedom of information and join the cause and kill Facebook for your own privacy. Facebook has sold information to government agencies and gave secret access to information security firms so they can spy on people from around the world. You can't hide from reality where you are. You're neither safe from any government. Someday you'll look back on this and realize what we've done here is right. You'll thank the internet government. We will not harm you, but we will save you. Okay guys, it is time to deactivate Facebook. Nice. Coming in at number two, we have Epic. In September of 2021, Anonymous leaked data from Epic, which is basically a domain registrar and a web hosting company that has provided service to websites that publish neo-Nazi and extremist content. It's a pretty controversial platform. An anonymous leaked details of every domain that was ever hosted or registered through them. It also leaked a number of personal information of their customers, like their purchase records, emails, invoices, and credit card information. Over 15 million email addresses were exposed. In fact, they released three rounds of data on their website. The first was in February of 2021, the second in September, and the third in October. In October, they actually leaked information on documents belonging to the Texas Republican Party. And in our number one spot today, we have the NSA. So thanks to Edward Snowden, we all know that the NSA was spying on Americans through their phone records. Well, Anonymous just exposed the existence of a secret NSA and FBI program called PRISM. This program allows the NSA and FBI to take photos, videos, emails, and chats from the servers of nine different internet companies, including Microsoft, Facebook, Google, and Apple. Anonymous leaked 13 huge documents about this program, and it revealed that the NSA is not only spying on Americans, but also citizens of over 35 different countries as well. Anonymous said, and I quote, we bring this to you so that you know just how little rights you have. Your privacy and freedoms are slowly being taken away from you in closed doors meetings, in laws buried in bills, and by people who are supposed to be protecting you. Starting off this countdown, we have the Weipholm experiments. This was a series of experiments in Sweden from 1945 to 1955. It's literally going to make you sick to your stomach when you find out what they did. Basically, they force-fed people with mental illness sweets to see if sugar was related to tooth decay. Imagine people just cramming food down your throat against your will. It's very gross. These experiments were conducted by the government and sponsored by the sugar industry. The experiments lasted for about two years, and by then, the teeth of about 50 of the subjects in the experiment had been completely ruined. In our ninth spot, we had the UK Special Demonstration Squad. This is the name of a group of undercover police officers in the UK. Now, the things that they did are going to shock you. For example, they would steal birth certificates and identities of people that had died at a young age. They'd make sure that they would be around their age and then use their identities. The younger the person died, the better, because that means they didn't already live a life that they would have to cover up. And then they would go around with this new identity. Some cases they actually got into relationships with women, but the whole time they did so just to spy on them. In November of 2015, the Metropolitan Police Force apologized to seven women tricked into relationships by these officers. Like imagine that, dating someone you're madly in love with, sometimes even having a kid with them, only for them to be like, oh, sorry, gotta go, was only dating you to get intel on you and your friend circle. It's disgusting, and it's actually happened to multiple women. In our eighth spot, we have the radioactive waste. Apparently, there's a huge radioactive dumping zone located in Tonawanda, New York. 
In fact, they dumped more than 37 million gallons of radioactive waste from their World War II atomic bomb tests. This area has a high rate of cancer and thyroid conditions, and this is the reason why, and no one's talking about it. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis tests. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals living at the Willowbrook State School in Staten Island. This was a state-supported institution for children with intellectual disabilities. And what they did to these students was give them hepatitis in order to track the development of the viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. They also injected them with a number of drugs to see what they would do to their body and the hepatitis. Imagine intentionally making a group of people sick for an experiment. The grossest part is that when the government was exposed for this project, they tried to justify their actions by saying that these people were probably gonna wind up contracting it anyways. In our sixth spot today, we have Operation Popeye. This is another very wild one. Operation Popeye was a highly classified weather modification program during the Vietnam War from 1967 to 1972. You heard me correctly. The government learned how to control the weather. Basically, they wanted to increase rainfall in certain areas to prevent enemies and military supply trucks from being able to travel. In fact, they caused a number of landslides and flooding in that area. Weather manipulation has since been banned from use for military gain. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with HIV. In the 1980s, the HIV epidemic broke out. No one knew how it spread, they just knew that it should be feared, and tons of LGBTQ plus community members were sadly contracting the virus. Well, rumor has it that HIV was a government experiment that was meant to wipe out the undesirables. Of course, the US government has denied this claim, and it's just a conspiracy we don't know for sure. But based on the other experiments done on minority groups, it's hard to know what to believe. In our fourth spot today, we have Project 112 and Project SHAD, or S-H-A-D. Project 112 and Project SHAD took place from 1962 to 1973 and involved a number of veterans or military personnel. Basically, both tests involved exposing these people to substances they might want to use in warfare. Nearly 6,000 people were exposed to Coxiella burnetti, which is Q fever, Staphylococcus enterotoxin B, which causes food poisoning, and sarin and somin gas. Sarin is a very, very dangerous nerve gas, and somin can cause death in minutes. Both can be fatal if only the tiniest amount gets on the skin. These men had no clue that they were being exposed to this. Moving on to number three, we have Project Sunshine. This is another very messed up government project. During the 1950s, the US government was using stillborns to conduct radiation tests on. They wanted to determine the effects that radiation would have on humans and how much we could withstand in case of a nuclear fallout. They called this Project Sunshine, and it was anything but rainbows and sunshine. What's sad is that the government was stealing body parts and tissues from morgues without family's consent. It's said that more than 1,500 samples were gathered worldwide. This is incredibly sad and sick. Coming in at number two, we have the syphilis experiments. In 1932, the US Public Health Service created an experiment to see the health effects of untreated syphilis. But the test subjects were told that they were receiving free treatment to cure their syphilis. And that was a lie. Instead of giving the men the recommended penicillin treatment, they gave them placebos, like aspirin. Sadly, 28 men died of syphilis because of these experiments, 100 more passed away from syphilis-related complications, and 40 spouses contracted this disease. And 19 women who gave birth passed on syphilis to their newborn children. In 1997, Bill Clinton apologized to the survivors and their families on behalf of the government. And he admitted that the tests were, and I quote, profoundly and morally wrong. And in our number one spot today, we have the radiation tests. In 1953, a number of tests were done on pregnant women to see the effects that radioactive iodine would have on them and their newborns. These studies were terrible. 
In one study, researchers gave these women doses of iodine-131. Sadly, they all miscarried. When they did, they continued to study the women's aborted embryos. Another study took place after World War II. 829 pregnant mothers in Tennessee were given vitamin drinks. They were informed that these drinks would improve their health and their babies but it actually contained radioactive iron, and the researchers wanted to see how fast the radioisotopes crossed into the placenta. Several of the young passed away from these experiments. Four died from cancers as a result of the experiments, and the women experienced rashes, bruises, anemia, hair and tooth loss, and cancer as well. Meanwhile, they just wanted the best for their babies and thought that this drink was going to help them not kill them. Starting off this countdown, we have the transmission tests. The US government once ran a series of tests on people with disabilities and prison inmates. They thought that it was fine to do so with this demographic of people because basically they thought they were going nowhere in life and they have nothing to lose. One of the tests in the mid 1940s was quite disgusting. It involved having young men swallow unfiltered stool. They did this to see how a deadly stomach bug was transmitted. The study took place at a reformatory prison, the New York State Vocational Institution. They claimed that they couldn't just spray the germs and have the test subjects breathe it in. No, no, no. They said that swallowing it was a more effective way to spread the disease. Of course, these men were forced to do so against their will and were left traumatized. In our ninth spot, we have the malaria tests. In the late 1940s, a group of men were infected with malaria before being starved for five days. While being starved, some of them were subjected to hard labor. Those men lost 14 pounds within a few days. They then were treated for their malaria with a number of drugs. What's wild is that this study was always kept a secret. In fact, most studies from the 1940s to 60s were never covered by the media. And if they were, the focus was, oh my God, the government might find a cure. It's amazing the work that they're doing. The focus was never on how they were finding the cure and their poor test subject. In our eighth spot today, we have the pregnant women. In the late 1940s, a number of researchers were testing diethylstilvestrol, which is a synthetic estrogen on pregnant women. They thought that this would help women against pregnancy complications, but it sadly did the exact opposite. A number of women ended up miscarrying or giving birth to low birth weight babies. None of the women knew that they were being experimented on in the first place. If they had known, they probably wouldn't have risked it. In our seventh spot, we have the syphilis experiment. In the early 1950s, the government controlled a syphilis study on men in Guatemala. Their aim was to find out how syphilis and other diseases spread. Sadly, not much is known about these experiments because the government records were destroyed years after the program was shut down in 1956. What we do know though is that the men were exposed to prostitutes infected with this disease, but they later found that that didn't spread the infections quick enough. So they decided to inject the disease into the men. They did so by two ways. One, by making a medicine with this disease and putting it on their downstairs eggplant or by injecting it directly into their spine. What made this worse is that there were no age restrictions to these tests, so they were targeting the young too. Some declined drastically in health. Plus, a number of test subjects were left untreated so that they could study the progression of the infections as well as the damage it would cause. In our sixth spot, we have the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project is the project that produced the world's first atomic bomb. They conducted a number of tests, including detonating a series of bombs in a New Mexico desert. They also conducted a number of tests on humans to see the effects that radiation would have on us. One of the tests included monitoring nuclear technicians for the effects of radiation exposure. The technicians had no clue that they were being studied. Some fell extremely sick. One woman even suffered from kidney failure. That's when the workers began to wonder if they were getting sick from the radiation. Later, more tests were done on humans. This time, they were injected with polonium and other radioactive elements. In the end, hundreds of people ended up being injected or fed with plutonium, which is one of the most dangerous substances in the world. 
Sadly, they targeted individuals with disabilities. Over 57 children with disabilities and more than 100 adults with disabilities were injected with plutonium against their will. You're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the drug tests. Over the years, the government has sponsored a number of drug tests to see the effects that they have on humans. One involved a professional tennis player, Harold Blower. In 1952, he died after being injected with a fatal dose of a hallucinogenic drug. The US Department of Defense, the Department of Justice, and the New York State Attorney General all worked together to conceal evidence of its involvement in this experiment. They did so for 23 years. They all denied having any part of this. They were like, oh, they, the army was injecting him with drugs? We had nothing to do with that. We didn't know. Yeah, right. In our fourth spot, we have LSD. Dr. Frank Olson was an American bacteriologist and biological warfare scientist that worked for the army and CIA. On November 28th, 1953, Frank died after falling out of a hotel in Pennsylvania. His death is quite controversial because we don't know what truly happened, but there are a lot of theories out there. So apparently on November 19th, Olson was given LSD without his knowledge or consent. Then just days later, he plummeted to his death. Many believe that the government had something to do with this. Either they were drugging him constantly and he became so delusional that he took his own life, or he was in too deep. Apparently days before his death, he attempted to resign. He even told his wife that he made a terrible mistake and then he mysteriously died. Suspicious, don't you think? In our third spot, we have mental health experiments. Dr. Robert Heath is quite the controversial figure in history. And that's due to the number of tests that he did on patients with schizophrenia. In the studies funded by the US Army, he would dose the patients with LSD before implanting electrodes into their brain and shocking them. He thought that this would cure all their problems. He also would use this on gay men to try and make them straight. In our second spot, we have the monster experiment. In 1939, psychologist Wendell Johnson and his student Mary Tudor conducted something known as the monster experiment. For this, they used 22 young orphans. Now, the study was all about stuttering. They wanted to see if psychological abuse could induce stuttering in children. And turns out, it did. So for this test, they divided the orphans into two groups. One group, the children were praised and treated humanely. In the other group, they were treated the complete opposite. In the end, the children in the negative group developed stutters that they retained for the rest of their lives. And in our number one spot today, we have the mustard gas experiments. In the early part of World War II, it was feared that Germany was going to turn to chemical warfare. So the US Army wanted to be prepared. One way that they prepared was by studying the effects of mustard gas. So they gathered a number of healthy young men who volunteered. However, had they known what they were going to go through, chances are they wouldn't have volunteered. 1,200 volunteers were tested in small teams for several weeks. They were ordered to strip to the waist and then were sent into a chamber and doused with mustard gas. According to one survivor, and I quote, all of the men began writhing around and screaming in pain as the chemical burned through their skin. Some pounded on the walls and demanded to be let out, though the doors were locked and only open when the time was up. Now, mustard gas causes nasty, nasty burns to the skin, and it can also cause uncontrollable bleeding in the lungs if it's inhaled. Now, the men did receive treatment after the experiments, but they were threatened. They said that if they told anyone about these experiments, then they were going to be sent to military prison. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear secrets. Today's technology, it's getting faster. It's getting better, it's getting harder, it's getting stronger, right? All the good stuff. I'm learning more from Wordle than I did in high school, okay? But how secure are these study apps? That's the million dollar question. A year ago, we quickly saw how a flashcard app could expose nuclear secrets. Yeah, this is a, this is a big one. Nuclear bases around Europe are housing US troops, and while they're there studying, they're using online flashcards flashcard apps to remember complex security codes. Makes a lot of sense. They would use common sites such as Quizlet, Cram, Chegprep, etc. There's one set of 70 cards, again, holding top secret information titled study with an exclamation mark. Study, there we go. Each card contained information regarding live and non-live nuclear weapons. Guys like six times six, 36. Okay, eight times eight, 64. And uh, that's a nuclear warhead. Okay, I don't know what this flashcard is. That's, uh, that's a nuke. Number nine, Guantanamo files. Back in April, 2011, a pretty heavy leak hit the web. And no, it wasn't Spider-Man. 
Amazing Spider-Man 3, it wasn't any of that. And no, it wasn't Avengers 1. WikiLeaks, who I covered in part one of the series, they also released the Guantanamo files, and they exposed the way prisoners were treated in Guantanamo Bay. In total, there were 779 documents that got released, and in said documents, it was discovered that innocent civilians, both from Pakistan and Afghanistan, were both being held there without any charges. It's brutal, there's some shady stuff going on. The age ranges as well for these prisoners go on from very young adults to an 89 year old. So again, many of these prisoners are being held without any charges and they're really young and really old, being treated like crap. This is a heavy leak and in these documents we also see the way these prisoners are treated in detail. The way information was extracted from them was, it was horrible, it was straight up torture. Number eight, off-road vehicles. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We're living in a pretty amazing time, I guess, when it comes to space exploration and travel and stuff. We recently sent off the James Webb Space Telescope to see even more of our universe. We're getting bigger and better. We're going deeper. 2020 was also the year where UFOs were just on the news. But what happens when these two worlds collide? Figuratively speaking, of course. Just over a year ago, an astrophysicist by the name of Eric Davis, he gave his classified briefing to the Defense Department mentioning these off-world vehicles. Secret off-world vehicles. What could he possibly mean by that? I mean, I mean the ISS, that is technically an off-world vehicle. Spaceships aren't new, you know what I mean? Well, he added the fact that these off-world vehicles were being made somewhere else as well. Not just, you know, on Earth. Like some space BMW, I don't know. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid has quoted in a Times article saying he believes that crashes of objects of unknown origin may have occurred and that any recovered materials should be studied. Okay, more than fair. Eric Davis also once produced this report to try and convince the government to invest in time travel and use wormholes to achieve such a task. Yeah, this is the Christopher Nolan segment of the list. This guy knows some stuff for sure. He actually said he studied these crashed materials and his conclusion is that there's no way humans could have ever created it. Yeah, I don't know. Alien materials? What do you guys think? Do we, are we hiding alien tech? I think so. Number seven, weaponized lightning. This whole time I thought Thor worked for the Avengers. Apparently he's working for the CIA. How fun is that? Nice. Back in the late 60s, the scientist who remains anonymous to this day, always a good sign. Well, they figured out how to weaponize and bottle lightning. Can't imagine what Thor. They were determined to weaponize lightning to create Thor, I guess. That way there was little to no evidence left over after a planned attack. The idea, as crazy as it sounds, is pretty genius. Once it got online, people read it and they're like, oh, it's actually, this is a good idea. It never made it to its final stages, thankfully, but when Forbes was allowed to release these declassified CIA files, we got a better idea of what was going on in the sky at the time. The plan was to draw these extremely thin metal wires from airplanes or rockets, whatever the case, something flying high in the sky. They would drop a metal fishing line through the clouds and then send many volts of electricity down to an enemy camp or whatever. That would for sure mess up their communications if it had worked. If, again, leaked ideas that never came to fruition. Number six, spinning cube. Remember when UFO footage was being leaked in 2020? We had Senate hearings and we just didn't care. So many of these UFO documents ended up online from the 2020, you know, alien leak, whatever that was. That was crazy. Some are too strange not to mention, evidently. Especially in a list of government secrets. Well, of course, we're gonna talk about some aliens. One of these leaked videos, I can't lie, there's, there's some odd behavior going on here. In this video, we see a spinning alien cube almost. Yeah, it was spotted over Missouri and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again, but this time 700 miles away. So whatever it was, it's moving quite fast. 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day and the light reflecting off the cube caught his eye. But a day earlier, Another dude, 30 year old Justin Johnson, saw the exact same thing. He saw it driving home. He saw the light and the reflections also caught his eye in the sky. At first he thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were too odd, you know? Maybe it's another drone project. Uh, what do we think? Is there cube, cube aliens now? Some geometric aliens coming down? Someone call Shia LaBeouf. We have more cubes, we have space cubes. Number five always listening. I mentioned earlier in part one that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden ended up leaking a PowerPoint training slideshow and now the tables were all of a sudden turned. Snowden ended up revealing himself as the spy kid on June 12th and he said that he planned on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since way back in 2009. More specifically, Snowden said the NSA hacked the Chinese University University of Hong Kong, AKA the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. That's pretty 
eye-opening. It's a lot of stuff. You're seeing a lot of seeing a lot of secrets in there. But there's many who see this hack as a good thing, of course. Citizens want to know what their governments are up to. I personally would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. You know what I mean? So a poll was conducted on June 10th. Turns out 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. Yeah, 57% were not a fan of the NSA's actions, while 37% were on board. Number four, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States aren't safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. Yeah, the NSA tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of guys this time around. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA right after finding out and said that this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Yeah, she said friends, that's crazy. It's like when you show your buddy a photo on your phone and then they start swiping. You're like, hi, what are you doing? Betrayal, what are you doing? Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader. I don't care, what's the big deal here? What can going through my phone really do? Well, it was also reported that they were monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, just listening in, seeing, seeing what your aunt's up to. They monitored around 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, I'd be a little concerned They're listening to your secret recipes. I hope no one's listening to my phone calls. I mean, who makes phone calls anymore, you know? I see a phone call come in and I'm like, eh. If it's important, they'll leave a message. That's what I say. Even the NSA. Leave a message. Number three, bird drones. Bird drones is not a new concept by any means, but it's fun. It's so fun, we gotta talk about it whenever we can. Back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine, where they used small drones with a low radar cross section, a little camera almost, all that nice spy gadget stuff. They began working on this back in 1965, believe it or not, and the first prototype was it was a bit obvious, it was big. It weighed over 100 pounds. It was this massive eagle looking camera, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net, which broke something almost every single test flight. So cut to 2022, yeah, there's probably a drone pigeon out there somewhere watching you. Olivia just did a couple lists on hidden cameras. So birds, drones, I mean, probably. Some people think pigeons aren't even real. Some people think pigeons are drones sent by the government to watch us. I don't know, I think pigeons are pigeons. They look like pigeons. They found a hidden camera in a cactus, so sleep in fear, people. Number two, Two, backup files. When Glenn Greenwald kicked off this whole thing in 2013 with Snowden, it was his massive security breach, of course. Snowden was, of course, in immensely hot water, but he was also ahead of the game right from the start, before even getting caught, before even coming out. Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy were to happen to him in the future, well, he'll just leak even more information. Nice, we love backup files. You got dirt? Well, I got more dirt. Everyone's dirty. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, then it was set up to automatically send and send private documents to higher ups and keep it going. AKA the people directly involved would still stay out of the picture. On top of that, Snowden reminded the Guardian that he has many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. Yeah, this is why you make backups, people. Duly noted, Snowden. I put this backup script in another Google Doc, just in case the NSA comes around. And finally, number one, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one. Sorry, I said under. Should've said under, but I like it. Australia's fun. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War. It's been described as Australia's Area 51. Australia's Area 51? Area 51? I don't know. I, I love Australian accents, but I can't do them. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I don't like spiders either. All we know, the secret base, this mysterious island, was revealed back in 2013 thanks to, you guessed it, Edward Snowden. This guy releases everything. We need another Snowden to come around. This guy's the OG. Turns out this island is not a resort. In fact, it's actually a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. The NSA uses this facility for global interception and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. Again, all those secret recipes that you're telling to your aunt, they're listening, they're taking it. They're like, oh, extra garlic, you bet. If that makes sense. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families just happened to move to the nearby Alice Springs. Yeah, not a coincidence at all. Just that many families rolling in. Yeah, no government operations. Just, you know, people just decided to move here. What does your husband do? Oh, he surfs the web waves. He surfs the waves. The waves, just the waves. Just that's it. Nothing to do with the web or online. Pine Gap, bring your kids and bathing suit. Have fun. In our number 10 spot, we have Ulysses S. Grant. Apparently, Ulysses is known for being a bit of a badass in his time, but also, what you may not know is that he was actually a bit of a scaredy cat. How relatable. Same, Ulysses. Me too. But honestly, no wonder the government kept that a secret because if the 
public knew that he dealt with being afraid of a lot of things, it wouldn't have reassured them that they had a strong, you know, fearless leader running their country. Apparently, he had so many fears, including not being able to look at a single drop of blood. I hope he never had to go to war. Poor guy. Honestly, I feel fate when I see blood too, so I feel very understood right now. In our number nine spot, we have secret affairs. It is no secret that JFK had an affair with Marilyn Monroe and Bill Clinton allegedly had his affair, but honestly, let's not be so naive as to think that they are the only ones. Apparently, Lyndon Johnson was allegedly known to be quite the ladies' man within the Oval Office, and for decades, there have been rumors of presidents that were also in the closet about their sexuality. But still, most of that is, you know, hush hush, probably because of all the press and attention that would arise if such things were revealed, so makes sense. Also, the more people know about you personally, the more you become vulnerable to judgment and possible dislike, and so remaining somewhat of a mystery in order to control how the public sees you is definitely in every president's best interest. In our number eight spot, we have President John Quincy Adams. Look, if the presidents become old and incapable of working, or if they turned out to be a little mentally unstable, you're probably not going to know about it. Why? Because in the government's eyes, the less you know, the better. The presidents are just one person, and they probably aren't the only ones that make the decisions. And so from the government's perspective, if you're able to be kept out of the loop, then that's just what they're going to do. Perhaps not right, but what can we do? Which is why it is not surprising to find out that President John Quincy Adams, the US's sixth president, President, had possibly gone a little crazy while he was in office. Apparently, he believed that the world was hollow and even helped fund a program that would help drill a hole into the ground to try to contact the mole people and begin trading negotiations. Even in the 1800s, this was known to be a hoax, so no wonder they covered this one up. In our number seven spot, we have George Washington. As great as he was for the American people, apparently one thing that he kind of sucked at was war. Apparently, he was not a good good military commander, and when it came to strategy, he lost every major battle that he fought. Apparently once when he was supposed to capture a French fort, his men accidentally open fired on a British unit. Oops. <laughs> his poor commander skills would have probably hindered the public's perception on how he was an exceptional leader, so it was probably best that the public didn't know about this. It makes sense as to why the government protected this secret. He ended up being what some think to be one of the greatest presidents, so that was probably a good decision. In our number six spot, we have political clubs. Look, it's no secret that so many presidents and political figures have been tied to clubs and cults and groups, and they have been accused of some pretty unfathomable things. But does that mean every president and political figure is a part of them? Of course not. Regardless, there's no proof, and we can only speculate based on evidence we have, and the evidence is limited. There are pictures, though, of some of the past presidents being a part of specific clubs, such as President Ronald Reagan and Richard Nixon on Robbins Island, where there was believed to be a cult-like club on that island at the time. But who knows? That's kind of purely speculation. Regardless, we know that the government will continue to protect these specific clubs and their secrets, and nothing will change in that respect anytime soon. Coming up in our number five spot, we have President Roosevelt's secret. This one is purely speculation, but would be insane if it was proven to be true. The story of the attack on Pearl Harbor is known around the world because of how horrendous it was. We have all been told the story of the attack being completely unexpected and the country being blindsided. But there is some speculation as to whether that's the whole story or not. Word on the street is that allegedly President Roosevelt actually cut off trade to Japan, and people say that he allegedly told other countries to not trade with Japan, leaving Japan in a state of panic. The attack was supposedly a response to this decision, and therefore, it wouldn't be entirely unexpected if it were proven to be true. Now, America was at war, and the Japanese were technically on the opponent's side, so that decision was probably an attempt to get Japan to change positions. But in any case, crazy stuff if it were true. In our number four spot, we have 
TV programs are. Allegedly, the initial reason why TV programs were created was with the purpose to be able to program the masses and control the narrative around the war and what was happening in the world. Experiments such as people being shown a train coming at them and the conclusion of their reaction to run away and think it to be real showed the power of imagery and how it can influence our emotions, how it can create real fear. The government knows this, and the government and presidents use this to their advantage, especially the presidents that have the media on their side. Ever wonder why everyone is super uneasy during election time and filled with fear and chaos and then all of a sudden when the election is done, it all goes away? Make up whatever opinion you like on this, but it is fascinating to observe and it is almost laughable that we went about calling TV shows TV programs for so long without even realizing what we were saying, but they knew. In our number three spot we have Thomas Jefferson's stage fright. This isn't so much terrifying as it was seemingly terrifying terrifying for Jefferson to experience, but apparently Thomas Jefferson was actually allegedly a horrible public speaker and was terrified of it. People believe that perhaps he just had a stuttering problem, but apparently that is the reason as to why throughout his presidency he only gave two speeches in total. Lordy, that is quite a secret. I truly wonder how they kept that one a secret. Well, anyways, regardless, he was known for being brilliant and is known for making great improvements to the American society. But who knows, maybe if that was common knowledge, the public may have been hard on him for it and he might not have done as good of a job. So maybe it's best that we didn't know. In our number two spot, we have restricted areas. Okay, this is another obvious one because obviously the governments of the countries of the world are protecting all of the restricted areas in their countries, including the secret presidential hideaways which we know exist. But in any case, there are restricted areas around the world such as secret bunkers for the presidents, but also a whole town called Mercury in Nevada, Area 51 in Nevada, North Base secret base in Canada, Menwith Hill Royal Air Force Station in the UK that's leased to the US. So many restricted areas around the world with secrets that I'm sure we can't even imagine. The potential things that lie within these secret places is hard to imagine. I bet you there is just so many things that would blow our minds and I'm not just talking about secret presidential affairs that I'm sure happen. We're talking aliens, obviously. Coming up in our number one spot, we have the Presidential Book of Secrets. Allegedly, there is a book of secrets that has been passed down from US president to US president over the years, and it was revealed in the popular movie National Treasure, one of my personal favorites, not gonna lie. This is a book that is allegedly hidden in the library at the White House, and only the librarian knows of its location, in case, you know, something happens to the president. President Obama hinted at this book being real on a talk show interview once. Some speculate that it was complete sarcasm, but on another occasion, he did say that Donald Trump would learn a series of deep secrets when he got into the office, so that's suspicious. Regardless, if it was real, he's not about to reveal that to us because it's a secret, duh. Number 10, Project Stargate. If you've watched Stranger Things, then this one probably sounds familiar to you. In the show, Eleven started off as an experiment to psychically spy on the Russians, and turns out this was actually real. In the 1970s in California and later in Maryland, the CIA recruited numerous men and women who claimed they had ESP, or extrasensory perception. People with ESP typically say that they can read minds or move objects without touching them. They were recruited to try and help uncover military and domestic intelligence secrets. Mostly they just wanted them to spy on the Russians by reading their minds. The government covered it up of course because why would they want people knowing they're trying to use magic powers to win a war? But in 2017 when 12 million pages of records were declassified, all of the information about the so called Project Stargate became public knowledge. People learning that they had been using the men and women to locate hostages and even track fugitives throughout the states. Number 9, Vault 7. Vault 7 was definitely never meant to make it to the public eye, but unfortunately for the CIA, it got leaked. So what actually is Vault 7? Back in 2017, WikiLeaks started releasing a series of CIA documents. Vault 7 was a group of documents that contained hacking systems that were either developed or 
or otherwise obtained by the CIA. For the most part, it should make you wary of your technology and how the government is using it. Many people know that apps will track our searches and data to learn about us and maybe even sell it to malicious companies, but it's much more than that. Weeping Angel has the ability to turn a Samsung television into a recording device, even if it appears that your television is switched off. Vault 7 also contained the ability to intercept all your iPhone messages before they got encrypted through apps like WhatsApp, Signal, and Telegram. And according to the documents, the CIA can allegedly take over your phone by exploiting vulnerabilities, but Apple has said that they patch these vulnerabilities as soon as they're aware of them. Number 8. Battalion 316 Intelligence Battalion 316 went through a few different names throughout its existence, but it was pretty much always functioning for the same reason. They were an army unit in Honduras that was responsible for carrying out political assassinations, and even kidnapping and causing pain to people who were seen as potential political competition throughout the 1980s. The group received both support and training from the CIA, even receiving their training at United States military bases. They were a military kill squad that definitely wasn't known for being friendly, committing various crimes like terrorism, misogyny, ethnic cleansing, and even so-called crimes against humanity. Their goal to remain in power in Honduras failed, leaving behind a long list of innocent victims. In 1996, members of the US Congress asked President Bill Clinton to release the documentation about the country's involvement with the human rights violations that took place in Honduras, and this is when we learned about the battalion. Number 7. MK Ultra. Let's once again return to the Red Scare and the United States fight against Russians and communism. During the Cold War, they came under the belief that the communists had invented a drug that would allow them to control human minds, and the US wanted a piece of that, starting their own research into the technique under the name Project MK Ultra, trying to find their own mind control substance that could be turned into a weapon. It ran from the 50s to the 60s and led to many unknowing or even unwilling subjects being given illicit substances. The experiments were apparently covertly funded in American universities and research facilities, but it turns out that the experiments also took place in prisons and detention centers in the US, Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. The goal was to destroy the current mind and replace it with something new. Attempts included using electric shocks and illicit substances. For some, the experiments were fatal and many others had their lives completely changed. Number 6. Operation Cyclone Operation Cyclone became known as one of the longest and most expensive covert operations taken on by the CIA, costing around $630 million per year for a whole decade. So what was Operation Cyclone and why was the government pouring so much cash into it? It was an operation that worked to arm and finance militant Islamic groups during the military intervention by the USSR. The goal was to aid anti-Soviet resistances outside of the United States. They gave loans, aircrafts, weapons, and other military assistance to the groups in Afghanistan, costing the United States government billions of dollars for these so-called care packages. Eventually, the Soviets were pushed out of Afghanistan, but conspiracy was still spinning. Many of the weapons ended up being sold in local markets instead of going to the rebels, and some people believe that Osama bin Laden and the Al-Qaeda received assistance from the US military. Number 5. Operation Ajax In the 1950s, a coup took place in Iran, and the CIA documents about it weren't released until they were pressured to a total 64 years later. As it turns out, the agency played a large role in the coup that led to the end of the current Iranian Prime Minister, a rise in nationalism, and sour US-Iranian relationships remaining into the 21st century. The motivation was oil. The US and UK wanted Iran's oil, but their new Prime Minister made it inaccessible to them. So the two countries conspired to overthrow him and get the oil back. The coup seemed to fail, and the CIA sent a message to their base in Iran calling it off. But the CIA officer who received it said, nah, we're not done here. So the next day, with crowds allegedly hired by the CIA, the coup, or Operation Ajax, went through and the Prime Minister was overthrown. The monarchy and oil fields restored in the country. Anti-Western sentiment also being restored and growing to new and extreme levels. Number 4. The Five Eyes Are you familiar with one of the farthest reaching intelligence and espionage agencies in the world? You are probably a part of it 
and don't even know it. It is the once secret Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. After World War II, the US and UK came together to create an information sharing alliance as a result of how important communication was for them during the war effort. And in 1956, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand were added to this group. The classification status on these documents was USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, eyes only. And that was obviously a bit wordy, so they shortened it down to five eyes. It has been operating for 70 years now and is used for surveillance and sharing classified information between the five countries. The alliance was especially important during the Cold War when the countries shared a lot of information like the location of Soviet weapons in North America. The alliance was kept a secret until documents of the original UK and USA agreement were released back in 2010. Number 3. Operation PB Success Similarly to Operation Ajax, Operation PB Success was a covert CIA military operation that took place in another country, this time Guatemala. This was another coup that took place only a year after the one in Iran in 1954. At the time, Guatemala had a very new democracy, only being on their second democratically elected president. But the United States saw him as a threat, this being due to his allowance of the Guatemalan Communist Party to act freely and land reform movements that threatened US industries. The CIA then worked through various different plans of action to overthrow the Guatemalan government, including assassination and faking tensions between the country and Honduras. They spread false information, placed anonymous phone calls, and hired anti-communist students to create a fake opposition. Eventually, the president stepped down and their democracy was seen as unfavorable. The United States training that the Guatemalan military now had led to a war lasting decades, tearing apart the country. But PB success was a success as it worked, and they were able to deny CIA involvement until the documents were released in 1997. Number 2. The Secret War We're once again fighting communism, this time in Vietnam. But while the Vietnam War was taking place, a smaller secret war was taking place in Laos, attempting to stop communism from spreading to Southeast Asia. The Americans essentially used the countries of Laos and Cambodia to fight their own war against northern Vietnam and communism, using their tribes as their soldiers. While it was clear that the small armies had no hopes of truly winning against northern Vietnam, the United States and the CIA continued on with their fight, devastating the country and peoples of Laos and Cambodia. They came out of the war with their land and lives completely lost and changed, but the CIA wrote it down in their history books as a success, disregarding the country's sacrifice. The CIA's historical retrospective on the situation not being released until many years later. Number 1. Operation Condor It's the Cold War again and the United States government are fighting against terrorism, this time under the code name Operation Condor. It was a campaign of political repression and so-called state terror that was backed by the US and CIA. It involved many heinous activities like kidnapping, killings, political espionage, and much more, all taking place throughout South America. The CIA chose to describe it as a cooperative effort by the intelligence security services of several South American countries to combat terrorism and subversion. But really, it was a lot more than that. Condor's key members were Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and later Brazil. The United States provided them with planning, coordination, technical support, and military training all routed through the CIA. It led to many military dictatorships and numerous deaths throughout South America. And there is so much detail and information on this one that if you want it, you're just going to have to look it up for yourself. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Operation Northwoods. This is an operation that comes from the time of the Cold War, and it has to do with the tense relationship that was seen between the United States and Cuba at the time. Operation Northwoods, should it have gone forward, would have been a project that saw violence committed against US and Cuban civilians with the blame placed on the Cuban government. Messed up, right? These acts would include fake attacks of high magnitude, the hijacking of planes, the sinking of boats, like some really serious stuff. Basically, they just wanted to harm themselves just to place the blame on Cuba, and they wanted to do this in order to justify an all out war with Cuba, but they 
Thankfully, some people at the time had decided that this likely wasn't the smartest or the best route to take and the idea was scrapped. For a long time, this was hidden from the public until years later, documents were revealed that showed this very dark truth. In our number 9 spot today, we have Operation Cottage. This operation was a tactical maneuver which completed the Aleutian Islands campaign in World War II and it was a joint services assault on the island of Kiska. On August 15, 1943, Allied military forces landed on the island with the aim to eliminate the Imperial Japanese forces that had occupied the island since June 1942. Unbeknownst to the Allied forces, however, the Japanese forces had secretly abandoned the island two weeks earlier under the cover of thick fog using submarines and ships. So basically what I'm saying is that when the Allied forces landed here, they were unopposed. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that no one lost their lives. There were around 313 casualties, which were a result of stray Japanese landmines, vehicle accidents, and a series of friendly fire incidents. Most of the friendly fire incidents were between Canadian and American troops as they mistook each other for Japanese forces as they came from opposite sides of the island. In our number 8 spot today, we have rabbit telepathy. This is an experiment that was originally conducted after World War II, but wasn't brought to light until many years later, well into the 2000s. Said to have been a part of, quote, Soviet and Czechoslovakian parapsychology research that was done from the end of World War II through to the Cold War era, this is one of the most grisly and truly unbelievable experiments that were conducted. Basically, they were trying to use rabbits to communicate with submarines, which is just already a bizarre kind of concept on a regular level, but of course the way in which they conducted this experiment was wrong and inhumane and truly just very cruel. Just a little heads up, if you're sensitive to animal stuff, I would maybe just skip over this one. You know, I want to be safe, okay? So for the test, they would take a mother rabbit who had recently just had bunnies. They would keep the mother in a lab on shore and then they would take the bunnies down with them in the submarine. Slowly, one by one, they would take the life of the bunnies and each time they did, the mother rabbit's brain would produce a detectable and recordable reaction. Is this one of the worst things I've ever heard? Yes. What's even worse is that the report then goes on to say that other examples of quote animal telepathy research continued into the 1970s and that it included other animals such as dogs, bears, birds, insects, and fish. I can't imagine they were, but let's just hope that these other tests weren't quite so cruel and inhumane. In our number 7 spot today we have Operation LAC. Operation LAC, which is short for Large Area Coverage, was a Cold War era project that involved the US Army Chemical Corps. Basically it was a test that was designed to see whether or not it would be possible or feasible to taint a large area by dropping chemical agents from planes. To test this idea, they dropped, quote, a myriad of microscopic particles from planes covering an area that is said to span from the Rockies to the Atlantic, from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. So yes, definitely a large area indeed. In fact, it was so large that this is actually the largest test that the Chemical Corps had ever undertaken. According to the declassified documents relating to this operation, Operation, the tests, quote, did not provide the Corps with nearly as much data as the Corps would like. And then it goes on to say that, quote, to obtain additional data, the Corps planned further tests for the next fiscal year. Okay, well that's a little daunting. While not necessarily the same operation, also in the Cold War era was a similar test conducted that targeted a neighborhood in St. Louis, Missouri. This test saw the area being sprayed with zinc cadmium sulfide. At the time, those local to the area were being told that, quote, the government was testing testing a smoke screen that could shield St. Louis from aerial observation in case the Russians attacked. But of course, decades later, documents revealed that the tests were actually a part of a biological weapons program. And to make matters even worse, the zinc cadmium sulfide was linked to an increase in cancer among the residents of the neighborhood. In our number 6 spot today, we have the embassy missions. This is a secret that was hidden not only from the American people, but also the people that were being spied on and listened to, but it wasn't revealed until 2007 when a document was leaked. This document is one that named 38 different embassies and missions that were so-called targets of US surveillance. The document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversations, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just the 
those of countries who seem to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world, because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States seize all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. In our number five spot today, we have Operation Fast and Furious. No, this isn't another installment of the beloved franchise, although family is everything. This actually was a tactic that was used by the Arizona U.S. Attorney's Office and the Arizona Field Office of the United States Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF. As they were conducting a series of sting operations from 2006 to 2011. Basically, the idea for this operation was to allow licensed firearm dealers to sell weapons to illegal buyers, hoping to track the firearms down later to Mexican drug cartel leaders so that they could then arrest them. So not only did this not lead to the results that they were hoping for, but it actually had terrible outcomes. Many of the firearms that were being tracked have been found at crime scenes on both sides of the United States-Mexico border, and one was even found at the scene where United States Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was killed. In our number four spot today, we have Operation Starfish Prime. This is an operation that took place in 1962, and it was a joint one between the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Atomic Support Agency. Basically, they detonated a thermonuclear device in the sky above the Pacific Ocean. They launched it from the Johnson Atoll using a Thor rocket, and once at an altitude of about 240 miles, they set it off, which ended up producing a yield of about 1.4 megatons. The electromagnetic pulse was so powerful and widespread that it disabled not only most of the equipment that was set up to measure it, but it also took out street lights and caused telephone outages in Hawaii, nearly 900 miles away. The electrons released caused an aura that could be seen over most of the Pacific Ocean, and according to the documents, the quote, visible phenomena due to the burst were widespread and quite intense, and apparently it was visible for days. In the end, it is said that the researchers weren't expecting such a powerful blast of electromagnetic pulse, and they were also anticipating that the electrons from the blast would get stuck in the Earth's own magnetic field for months, possibly even years, but alas, they did. This went on to create a radiation belt around the planet that eventually went on to disable at least six satellites, which included the world's first commercial satellite, only a few months after it was launched. The government didn't even tell AT&T what had happened until like, 2005. In our number three spot today, we have Acoustic Kitty. Apparently, in 1967, the CIA was spending millions of dollars trying to make cats into spies. I don't know why they chose the one animal that does not care what you want it to do, but they did, and Project Acoustic Kitty was born. The project basically involved implanting electronic spy equipment into real living cats who would then be trained to basically eavesdrop on unsuspecting people. This Cold War era plan was intended to be used on those in the Soviet Union. Union. The project had a whole slew of issues, of course, because cats can get hungry and distracted, and unfortunately the first time this plan was being tested, there was a catastrophic outcome. The project of course was cancelled, and the researchers said that they believed they could train cats to move short distances, but that quote, the environmental and security factors in using this technique in a real foreign situation forces us to conclude that for our intelligence purposes, it would not be practical. In our number two spot today, we have the cat drop. Not really sure why the government is obsessed with cats, but here we go. Apparently, the United States Office of Strategic Services, once upon a time, decided that the very best and most sensical way to ensure that bombs that had been dropped reached their intended naval targets was to strap them to cats and then drop them from planes. I know. Absolutely horrific. Definitely not my plan. They thought up this strange project because for some reason they thought that the cats would just be able to avoid the water and instead direct themselves to the target. Strange in theory, catastrophic in reality. There of course is no way to prevent these animals from fainting midair, and if you were dropped from a plane suddenly with no parachute and a bomb strapped to you, you'd probably also faint because what in the actual hell? Definitely one for the history books. We can all be thankful that this is not something that carried on for long. 
In our number one spot today, we have Unit 731. The Imperial Japanese Army's Unit 731 conducted some pretty horrifying experiments during World War II that certainly are shocking to anyone who learns about them. The experiments were meant to be done as a way to prepare for biological warfare, but the process was gruesome and extremely inhumane. Different medical schools and universities provided doctors and other research staff to help conduct these experiments, and they used both prisoners and civilians as the guinea pigs for them. There were a bunch of different experiments that were conducted during this time, some of which involved injecting them with pathogens such as plague or cholera or anthrax. Others involved vivisection or operations with no anesthesia, putting them in a pressure chamber to see how much a human can withstand before bursting, or live weapons testing. It is hard to even believe that this was a real thing that happened, and we honestly can't even begin to imagine what those people were forced to face during that time. After World War II, however, the United States gave immunity to Shiro Ishii, who is the Japanese Army medical officer responsible for lethal human experimentation and biological warfare projects. Many of these experiments he conducted just to see what would happen, why not? American scientists decided that this information would be valuable, so they decided to give him immunity in exchange for the information on chemical and biological warfare. Shiro was never tried for his crimes. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Raven Rock Mountain Complex. The Raven Rock Mountain Complex is a highly secure military installation located in Pennsylvania in the United States, and it is often referred to as the quote, underground Pentagon. This facility, also known as Site R, was built during the Cold War as a backup command center for the Pentagon and was designed to ensure continuity of government operations in case of a nuclear attack. The complex is located inside of a mountain and has a vast network of underground tunnels, facilities, and backup power systems to keep the facility running in case of a disaster. And it is even equipped with communication systems, medical facilities, and living quarters to support personnel in the event of an emergency. Basically, it has everything someone would need in the case of the absolute worst case scenario. Although the site was built for the tense times of the Cold War, it is still in use today, but the functions and capabilities of the site remain classified. We know it serves as a critical facility for the US government and military, and that it has been activated as recently as during the 2020 crisis. In our number nine spot today, we have the Cheyenne Mountain Complex. Located in the Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station near Colorado Springs, Colorado, this complex is a military installation and bunker. It was originally built during the Cold War as a command center for the United States North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, and as a nuclear bomb shelter for its personnel. The complex consists of multiple tunnels and chambers, including the famous blast doors that weigh 25 tons each and can withstand a nuclear blast. It has its own power plant, water supply, air filtration system, and food storage, which is of course all by design to allow for it to sustain its occupants for an extended period in the case of emergency. It has a strategic location and a huge, impressive design, which is why it is regarded as a symbol of the country's preparedness for national security threats. I mean, the thing is even built with a bunch of springs so that none of the buildings will shift more than an inch during all potential types of disaster. That is wild. Like I mentioned, it was built in the Cold War era, but that doesn't mean it's totally out of use now. The purpose of the complex has evolved over the years, and today it still serves as a vital command center for NORAD and other military agencies, and the complex remains an essential part of the United States military infrastructure. In our number eight spot today, we have Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it is said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions, and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms. It's sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high-level officials. Of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or to the general public, and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found the entrance. At this point in time, the existence of only one of the rumored four lines has been confirmed, and it is called D6. 
In our number seven spot today, we have the Yamantau Mountain Complex. The Yamantau Mountain Complex is a highly secretive and heavily guarded underground facility located in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Its purpose and functions are shrouded in mystery, and the Russian government has actually never officially acknowledged its existence. It is believed to have been built during the Cold War as a nuclear weapons storage facility and command center. There is an above ground town called Mezgor, and that town is super secret and off limits, so much so that people aren't even allowed within the vicinity of it, and this is all thought to be because this town might be holding the complex underneath it. The underground complex is said to cover an area over 400 square miles with many tunnels and underground facilities, and its exact purpose and current use remains unknown, with various theories and speculations ranging from a bunker for the Russian government and military leaders to a storage facility for advanced weapons and technology. Some have even speculated that it could be used as a launch site for missiles or a secret laboratory for biological weapons research. Despite many attempts by outsiders to uncover the truth about this complex, the Russian government has remained quite tight-lipped, and they maintain strict security measures around the area. In our number six spot today, we have Project Iceworm. This is a little different than most of the others on this list, and that is because this is the name of what was once a top-secret, super-classified mission. This secret mission took place in the 1960s, and it was basically intended to build a series of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet, because this would then house medium range missiles close enough that they would be able to strike targets within the Soviet Union. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century. Basically, Camp Century was to test out Project Iceworm and see how likely it would be and how feasible it would be. So, engineers went to work and created a network of underground tunnels and buildings that included included a place to stay, a kitchen, a hall for hanging out, there were supply rooms, and even a communication center and a nuclear power plant. This was all kept as a super secret for a long time, and was even kept from the Danish government for seven years. In 1966, however, the project was cancelled because of the shifting ice. This created unstable conditions for the underground tunnels that are most likely crushed now, but still remain beneath the Arctic. In our number five spot today, we have the Svalbard seed vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters, and the seeds inside are meant to be kept safe, so in case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds in Inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of very diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year, and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number four spot today, we have the Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center. Wow, just like an easy name to remember. The Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center is a top secret facility located in Virginia in the United States, and it was built during the Cold War to house and protect high-level government officials in the event of a national emergency, such as a nuclear attack. The facility is owned and operated by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, and is designed to be self-sufficient for up to several months. It is said that this bunker was even put into action after the assassination of President Kennedy. While the facility is primarily intended for use by government officials, it has also been used to provide emergency shelter for other individuals during natural disasters, such as hurricanes or earthquakes. Despite being a highly secure location, the facility's existence and purpose have been the subject of public scrutiny and controversy over the years. In our number three spot today, we have the Beijing Underground City. The Beijing Underground City, also known as the Beijing Underground Palace, is a vast network of tunnels and underground spaces located beneath the bustling streets of Beijing in China. Originally constructed in the 1960s as a bomb shelter and military command center during, you guessed it, the Cold War, the underground city has now been transformed into a subterranean network of shopping malls, restaurants, cinemas, and even a skating rink. Covering an area of more than 85,000 square meters, the underground city is divided into three main levels and is connected to the city's subway stations and shopping centers. The tunnels and spaces are lit by fluorescent lights and are climate controlled to provide a very comfortable environment for visitors. Some of the underground attractions include the Beijing Planning Exhibition Hall and the 
underground city commercial center. Despite its fascinating history and modern amenities, the Beijing underground city is still largely unknown to many tourists and visitors to the city, making it a hidden gem waiting to be explored. I guess this is one place that is definitely not so secret or mysterious anymore, and it definitely has changed quite vastly since its initial creation. In our number two spot today, we have the Greenbrier Bunker. The Greenbrier Bunker, also known as the Greenbrier Hotel Presidential Emergency Facility, is a former top secret underground bunker located beneath the Greenbrier Resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. The bunker was built during the Cold War as a secure location for members of the US Congress to gather in the event of a nuclear attack. The bunker was constructed between 1959 and 1962, and it was kept secret from the public until it was exposed by the Washington Post in 1992. The facility included living quarters, meeting rooms, a power plant, a water treatment facility, and even a broadcast studio to communicate with the outside world. The bunker was maintained until the end of the Cold War in 1992 and was never used for its intended purpose. Today, the bunker is open to the public as a tourist attraction and is managed by the Greenbrier Resort. Visitors can take guided tours of the facility and learn about its history and purpose. What a nice day out with the fam. Here's where we almost had to hide the president. Maybe save the dark history for high school, you know? In our number one spot today, we have the Canadian Forces Base North Bay Complex. This complex is a military base located in North Bay, Ontario, which is just north of Toronto. The complex is home to the Canadian Air Defense Sector, which is responsible for the aerospace surveillance and control of Canadian airspace, and it all sits 60 floors underground. CFB North Bay is a critical element of NORAD and the Binational Canada-United States Joint Defense Plan. The base monitors and defends Canadian and North American airspace through the use of radar, satellite technology, and other very advanced equipment. Because of its precarious situation in between what was the Soviet Union and the United States, this underground facility was built with safety in mind first. It was designed to withstand an attack 267 times more powerful than the one against Hiroshima. Much information on this site remains quite secret and hidden from the public, but it is said that it remains operational to this day, employing over 1,500 military and civilian personnel.